Homicide, Dave McDonald. You go out to New York City, find a homeless guy, murder him, Batman snuff rises. Chris Pepper Stanley. Jedi, so much best better. One. I'm oh. sorry I don't like the second one the best like everyone else. Sean O. Barry. This is what you get in my house. We're spilling paint in the garage. Do I out. stutter? Roy Schaefer Harder. I was ready to Phil don a Snyder. Yankee, Yankee outfit and <laughs> bash people's brains and run through the streets. They are the movie experts. They are the movie masters. They are the Watchers. Hey, 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 hey. Yes, stop. It's the Watchers time. Good evening, everybody. East Side Dave McDonald here. And with me tonight, Chris Pepper Stanley and Sean O'Barry. We compromise or constitute compromise or we we make up how about that the watchers everyone roy schaefer not here with us this evening tonight is a very special episode because we usually do these once a month but tonight is different ladies and gentlemen because on monday night football all of a sudden out of the blue the new Star Wars trailer came out. That's right. And as a result, this evening, you're getting a special uh, bonus, a monthly bonus episode. Tonight's our Star Wars trailer bonus October spectacular. Okay? Try saying that two times, twice. Um, so, here's the deal. It's going to be phenomenal tonight's episode of The Watchers as we break down the Star Wars trailer. Did both of you guys see the trailer? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, did you buy tickets, may I say? No, I don't need to buy tickets to a movie when it's out in two months. I, I think I'll wow. catch it. What yeah. about when it comes out on the uh, opening night? How about that? I There's no way in hell. You can put a gun to my head. I'm not going to that movie uh, opening night. Yeah. Well, I was online with uh, two uh, different computers. I saw you on Periscope, actually, online in a movie theater, freaking out. It was crazy. I saw that, well, too. What, here's what happened. I'm sitting there in my house. Yeah, by the way, it was my team, uh, the New York Football Giants, playing the Eagles on Monday Night Football. So you would think I, would wanna, I did want to be in my house. And then all of a sudden, about 7.45, 7.50 happened, and I started to feel somewhat of like a heart attack feeling. Anxiety was washing over me. I suddenly got cold sweats, and I felt like, well, I have two computers, two apps up, two cell phones up, but what if fucking everything crashes legitimately? And so I drove 90 miles an hour on the Garden State Parkway to get to the Mammoth Mall movie theater, the AMC movie theater, and um, yes, I frightened the teenage kid. I started screaming at the teenager, Give me my Star Wars tickets at one point. That's what that was not on Periscope. And he said the tickets would not be on sale. All kinds of people, including G-Baby, were saying the tickets were going to be on sale at 830. But then, so then I go to the guy. I go, uh, I've heard from multiple sources the tickets are going to be on sale at 830. And he goes, oh, uh, I don't even think the tickets are going to be on sale today. So I had a full-on fucking panicked. Go ahead. Sure. Well, yeah. Well, um, apparently the fucking t the tickets went out two hours earlier, I believe, according to G Baby, and uh, so that's what uh, screwed up the uh, online system. It's, that's what crashed it. So then, like you and like G Baby, who writes for io9.com, they, they um, you guys went to the actual theaters and were able to get tickets. No, but that's the thing. The theater that I went to, I felt like okay. The best, my best thing is I'm not going to rely on my two computers and my two cell phones. I'm going to get the hard tickets from the the, the uh, thing. And the fucking kid behind me goes, I, I, I don't even think that they're selling the tickets tonight. <laughs> he didn't even say like now or two hours. He said tonight. I then, asked, I, I then demand to speak to a manager um, looking psychotic. I look like Anakin Skywalker at the end of Revenge of the Sith. I had you yellow eyes. You should have booked the kid that you were online with on the show tonight. <laughs> Did it say at well, the, didn't it say at the end of the trailer like tickets available now? But that's the thing is I didn't want to wait till the trailer because I kept hearing from sources 8.30, 8.30. This is 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, 8.30. So I was freaking out. So, yes, then I, I was on Periscope Live. In fact, if you want to see the Periscope video, I actually put it on my YouTube channel on Eastside Dave TV. That 
is a video. That's 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 video evidence of a person truly losing his shit. Yeah, if you want to have when, a, it, when, you, when I rewatched it, I was frightened. If at you want, the, yeah. uh, if you want to have the, an anxiety attack, please watch that video. <laughs> that was that was terror, sheer terror, as if a fucking Death Star was uh, imminently about to destroy my own planet, which is planet Earth, by the way. Hmm. Okay, all right. Um, so anyway, uh, but the good thing was I panicked after that. I just saw it, decided I'm going to drive back home and I'm going to uh, do my best. And I did get tickets, one for the 1030 showing on Thursday night and one for the four o'clock showing on Friday, the very next day. So actually, though it rolls out December 18th, some theaters are doing it on Thursday, December 17th. I got one for both days. Bam. Flam, so, so schmam. Wait, just with just one? Are you going with anyone, or just? Yourself? I'm going with my children on Friday, but the I am taking myself so that the what I call the little bathroom interrupting machines don't <laughs> fuck my first viewing up. Because all they do is piss shit and want more food. That's all they fucking do. Agreed. Okay. What's the, what? What's that? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that is it's goddamn distracting. I need my focus on Kylo Ren. I need my focus on Han Solo. I need my focus on the characters. So here's the deal. I want to give you a, a few uh, takeaways right now. First of all, it was on The Watchers a few months ago where we had Jimmy Mack of Rebel Force Radio. Does a great job, a phenomenal job. Recently okay. recently uh, okay. featured in the Chicago Tribune, by the nice. way. Nice. A, a full-on spread. About, I, I believe it was our connections, of course, with the Chicago Tribune that landed him there. I can't I prove it. Yeah. I, I mean, everyone knows, you know, us and the Chicago Tribune, Tribune go back a long, long time ago. For, with the Watchers, Chicago connection goes back to the late 70s. But anyway, um, um, it, the, the thing was um, that uh, – so I go and uh, I was talking to Jimmy Mack. We were all talking to Jimmy Mack months ago, and I said, listen – if there was one uh, Death Star, why not 10 Death Stars, 20 Death Stars? How come not multiple? How come not 50 Death Stars? Now, if you go to one uh, 15 in during on the trailer, you see Han Solo in front of a computer screen, and there's like, a, 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 there's like 50 little planetoids. What were they, Pepper? Death Stars, bitch. No, do you want to know what they are? Because I fucking know what they are. No, don't tell me. Okay. <laughs> so wait, so because you you read the script, it, it, uh, <sighs> just just ask me stuff because I don't know anything. Go ahead. Okay, Sean, sure, no. yeah. were those uh, death well, no, stars? No, 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 no. If you look at the, if I'm not giving anything away that isn't already out. No, 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 I don't know how to ask you questions no, if you actually know. Just let me let me talk to you. Let me let me talk to you. Okay. Go ahead, please. <laughs> All right, so you saw the poster that came out, right? Like the hand-drawn poster or whatever? Yes. All right, and you saw like the giant like Death Star-esque device in the background? Yes, sir. It's not a Death Star. It's, a, it's something called the Star Killer. That's what it's called. It's a base. I've it's heard base, this floated yeah. out on the internet. Yeah. But it's a base that has the ability, perhaps, to destroy other planets. That's a Death Star, son. Well, That's a damn Death Star. They're calling it the Star Killer. It's very okay. good. So they've just changed the name from Death Star to Star Killer. Okay, but it's a goddamn Death Star. No, so, it's, it, Dave, it's a Star Killer. <laughs> so I want, like, I like want that ability prediction to kill the, like, on the ability board. Ability to kill the sun? Like, that's pretty cool. Okay, I want that prediction on the board. The other prediction is this. You go to 156 in the trailer, you see Princess Leia and Han Solo. Pepper, don't tell us anything. I'm not, I'm not, I promise you, I won't say anything. What I'm saying is this. You freeze that, 156 in. There's Princess Leia and Han Solo. Clearly, it's Solo. Yes, we don't see the person's face, but you see the scar on the chin, the gray hair. So this looks like Leia and Solo embracing. You see the whip. You see everything. The hat. <laughs> you see um, the, um, the um, paintings of... Uh, crackers that he was uh, drawing does anyone remember re regarding henry thank you of course, very much. Of course we all do thank yeah, you for the ritz, three people <laughs> who saw regarding henry ritz crackers yeah yeah the ritz he was shot at the ritz okay um but here's the thing my prediction is this he says to princess leia 
one last time, one last mission. I got to do this one last time for the rebellion. Mm. And so Anal. he said that in the trailer. Anal. No, he doesn't say it. This is my prediction. Thank oh. you for listening. Oh, I thought you meant like anal sex. Thank or... you for listening. Fuck balls. Hey, I know what happens. Yeah, I know you know, so don't say anything. I, I'm I, not saying why, anything. Why is a non-Star Wars fan, are you reading the leaked script, by the way? So I don't really have to go see the movie. That's such a shitty fucking thing to do. So now that we theorize on the Watchers, you know what we're going to talk about. You're just going to be like, ah, you're wrong. Ah, you're right. By the way, what if this, what if this is disinformation that J.J. Abrams is intentionally doing? Okay, so I this, is, this, was, this is what makes me believe it was real. So this this leak or whatever came out like a long time ago. You and got your hands on the leaked Star Wars Episode Seven script, by the way, is what you're you're claiming. So that to set it up for everyone. Yeah. Okay. And there are and and then so the new the official trailer came out, right? And all a bunch of the scenes, actually every scene in the trailer coincides with what happens in this leaked script, which leads me to believe that it's pretty legitimate. Okay, all right. We'll see what happens, but maybe they ch remember this one thing, Pepper. Okay, is that at the end of Empire Strikes Back, everyone was on set, even when the actor David Prowse said to Luke Skywalker, said to Mark Hamill, the actor, all the crew people said, um, he goes like this. He goes, Obi Wan never told you what happened to your father. Mark Hamill goes, he told me enough. He told me you killed him. And then David Prowse goes, no. Obi Wan killed your father. Okay, that's what the actors said on script for okay. intentional disinformation. It matched up with the dailies. It matched up with everyone, and everyone said, "Oh my God, Obi Wan! Uh, um, Obi Wan just uh, said that he's the guy's father." Well, or, or, or Obi Wan killed his father. Well, in actuality, George Lucas did not want the info to be leaked. He told uh, Mark Hamill, listen, this is really what's going to happen. Or maybe it was Irvin Kirshner who directed Empire said, this is really what's happening. You react like this. Oh, I'm your father. Blah, blah, blah. So I'm just saying it's not out of the realm of possibility okay. that some of this shit, you know, got out like that. I, all right. I, I concur, bro. Now, <laughs> back to light. Leia, 156. Why would she be crying? If Han Solo didn't say one last mission, doll, your princessish, your worshipfulness, one last mission, your worship. Did you just have her have him call her dog? <laughs> doll. Oh, doll. I All was right. kind of mixing Indy and uh, fucking uh, Solo, but he definitely called her your worship many a time. Your worship. Weird. So what I think is he does go on that one last mission for the rebellion, a.k.a. the resistance. And what happens he um he bites the dust. This is just a theory. I'm not Pepper. I believe Han Solo will die at the end of episode seven. Pepper, don't react because I don't want you to spoil it for us. I believe Han Solo will die. And not only do I believe this, I'm going to go you one further. This is a real life prediction. It will score Harrison Ford's second Oscar nomination in his lifetime. Oh, before you give me that wincing, Alec Guinness got a nomination for supporting actor for a little film called Star Wars, Pepper. And should he have? He was brilliant as Kenobi. And what happened? You mean and, Ben. And what happened as Ben Kenobi? He died. That got him the nomination, baby. He got fucking, he came back in the force, though. He was a force ghost. And by the way, for today's show, you're going by the name Pepper Chewy. And you're Sean 3PO. Okay? Thank you. At least I'm not gay. And I'm gay Dave K Dave Skywalker. Wait a minute. Sean 3PO? Your off. Sean 3PO? Comments? Well, I'd prefer to be Sh Sean 2D2. Nope. You're Sean 3PO, a gay robot God. who likes to have golden showers, apparently. Damn. So golden that you turn golden. Now listen. Here's the other deal. Here's another theory I got for you. Luke Skywalker. Why have we not seen his face yet? What is going on? Because we all he, assumed he was going to be an Obi Wan Kenobi type of character. He's also not in the poster. Can I? Can he's I give? Not a, in the poster. Can I give a theory? Please do. I think that he is Kylo Ren. This is what some people are saying, and it's distressing for me 
because I have heard, if not Kylo Ren, because I do believe that uh, that it probably is Adam Driver, the actor from the Coen Brothers movie. But if it's if it's not if he's not Kylo Ren, what if he's a fucking bad guy? What if? What if? Something weird is going on with Luke Skywalker that we don't know about. We all assumed he would destroy the Death Star after uh, Jedi. He destroys Vader. He destroys the Emperor. Basically, he's America's rock star. He's like the greatest president we've ever had. He's like a, a president mixed with a rock star, yeah. mixed with a soldier. Yeah. What if something else has happened to Luke? Well, look, look, listening to the trailer and listening to any of the dialogue in it, you hear Harrison Ford saying that, yeah, it's all true. The Jedi. The Jedi. The you know the the Sith or whatever the the dark side of the force the whatever dark side the Jedi it's all well, true well he, and he's telling like young people this so that that would lead you to believe that maybe the Luke Skywalker destroying the Death Star or whatever really didn't get didn't it was get been publicized because it's been thirty years it's been it's thirty years right like yeah. this movie like in yes. actual it's actual thirty years yeah yeah the, thirty, 30 years in basically thirty years in real life thirty years in yeah. Star Wars world. yeah yeah um. That, if that happens, that's the coolest thing of all time. Because now we're talking about myths within myths within myths. And I was turned on to it by our good friend, Ken Mills, who gives me all great Star Wars emails. Jimbo gives me the great Star Wars photoshops. Ken Mills gives me the great Star Wars emails. And Ken Mills showed me something which was phenomenal, which was a little thing called Star Wars Ring Theory. Familiar with it, are you? No. <laughs> okay. Where'd he, where'd he go, Yoda? <laughs> Essentially, and I'll try to do it as quickly as possible because it's very, very complex. This dude took two years out of his life to write this utterly epic article and, and post it online called the Star Wars Ring Theory. And you have to look it up because it's amazing. Basically, we all suspected that, you know, episode one of Phantom Menace matches up with the, the basically the first movie of the prequel matches up with the first movie of the original trilogy second movie of the prequel matches up with the second movie of the original trilogy third movie of the prequel matches up with the third movie of the original trilogy right yeah. okay he's saying yes that's true that's called paralleling each other but in addition to paralleling each other they also simultaneously mirror each other it's very weird, very layered, very complex. But in other words, so at the same time as the, the first movies of each series paralleling, episode one of the prequel mirrors Jedi. The two movies mirror each other, and then Jedi also mirrors, or excuse me, the Revenge of the Sith then mirrors A New Hope. And my point is this. What if they're, they're continuing this? What if they are they they are well aware of the uh, George Lucas ring theory who before he turned the keys over did say look I have ideas now we don't know how much of George Lucas's ideas are going to go into this movie we've been told very few we've been told almost nothing but what if they said you know what the one thing we like is this weird Star Wars ring theory which would go to the Luke Skywalker Star Wars universe, myths within myths within myths. I fucking love it. It's like Pink Floyd, Uma Guma. Now all of a sudden, the own movies that we saw of Luke Skywalker are, are their own myths. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Wait, so Phantom Menace links to what? Both. Both what? Phantom Menace, which is the first movie of the prequel, right, right. parallels the first movie. There's a big celebration at the end. There's a big this. There's a big that. Okay. But at the same time, if you watch the beginning of Phantom Menace, it has almost shot by shot, same beginning of Return of the Jedi. It's no coincidence that George Lucas did a lot of this stuff. So he's paralleling the movies, but he's also inverting them and mirroring each other all at the same time. It's like almost infinite uh, um, good, evil. It, they both need each other. So to he go he never has to make an original story. This is brilliant. No, what it is, it's like a fucking amazing galactic LSD trip is what I'm saying. Look it up, Star Wars Ring Theory. Yeah, look it up, Pepper. Look it up right now. Are, are you going uh, after the show? I'm looking it up right now. Wow, that's crazy. Wow. So you knocking on wood is, lo is looking it up? That's No, I have a wooden keyboard. Do you know that? 
Oh, mechanical. Yeah, nice. Um, it's it's very cool. By the way, there is um, one uh, thing that Roy Schaefer decided to send to the watchers tonight. Uh, he he said, um, you know, um, the young man uh, who plays uh, Finn. He's a, a a nice young man. He's a he's British he's an actor. Attack the block. Yeah, he's a British actor, and uh, he's I think going to be portraying a stormtrooper at the beginning. And Roy said it's good of them to get Tracy Morgan as a stormtrooper. So I find that very offensive. There was no reason to read that cut, Mike. <laughs> well, he did. Actually, we just all seem racist now. Did, did no, he, I, I'm. I'm saying, Roy, I don't appreciate that. Well, didn't he actually uh, actually send another? I don't know, his text or an email about uh, Darth Vader's real name. No, what is it? Why am I biting for this? But, uh, it's some sort of big. Uh, I, I forget. I, I, I can't. Right. Well, that's not good. If you're gonna set it up. I, I, well, I thought you guys knew what I was talking about. No, I don't. I didn't get that email. I, uh, otherwise, I would have read it myself. Well, let's just say it was. It has to do with the word that it, you made me um, take out last okay, week. Okay, let's just move on. Thank you. <laughs> we know of Roy Schaefer's strange Germanic roots, and some of that, unfortunately, gets to his head. I, I believe he's racially cool, but I think sometimes, <laughs> yes, uh, some of his DNA, uh, some of his heritage, uh, you know, he's got psychotic moments. Um, the other thing that's, uh, going on is, um, you know, uh, at the beginning of the, uh, trailer, you see someone, um, going down a rope. Who is it? I believe that's the girl. What is it? Star Destroyer? Is that what we're looking at? Yeah, it's definitely the, um, the crashed, um, Star Destroyer. hundred percent. has to be. So you know this? Or no, no wait, I mean, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I, I think, I think I, that's what I assumed as soon as I saw the trailer. As soon as I saw that scene, at, when she was falling down the big room, I thought right. it, 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 I, I thought immediately it was the Star Destroyer that was crash landing on that, on that desert planet. Okay, let me ask you this question. Now we finally got to hear Kylo Ren. By the way, I thought that shot was awesome. Some people are criticizing it. Hey, it's the J.J. Abrams lens flare because he likes to do this little lens flare cinematography trick on virtually all of his movies and or television shows. He loves the lens flare. And there was a little bit of a lens flare with that amazing sort of uh, camera gliding into Kylo Ren, who was either standing on a Star Destroyer or some sort of, uh, you know, Imperial base of some kind or First Order, I believe they're going Or by. a Star Killer. Yeah, it's the First or, Order. Yes. The name of their, their First Order. So uh, I thought it was awesome. But we finally got to hear Kylo Ren speak, which, by the way, tells me that it's not Mark, Mark Hamill underneath that mask. But now we're learning a little bit about Kylo Ren when he, he was talking to the Darth Vader mask. I originally, when I saw the second trailer, thought that it was Luke Skywalker, perhaps, holding the Darth Vader mask. Now we know Kylo Ren is in possession of this Darth Vader mask, which does tell you that is this guy some sort of Weird Darth Vader fanboy. He's a That's- fanboy, just like everyone going to see this movie, the first goddamn showing. Yeah, right. doesn't he say like, uh, "I'm going to do what you you tried to do right. or you could have done"? I mean, meanwhile, didn't didn't Darth Vader kind of end up kind of cool? He was like, "Oh, Darth- take yeah, my mask Darth- off." Yeah, We're Darth Vader. Good. But if we go to Pepper's theory, where they hid that story, then he might think Darth Vader just got killed. And never knew that Darth Vader actually went to the good to the light side of the Force. So mm. that actually would go with Pepper's theory, I suppose. Wouldn't they feel um, it? Wouldn't they feel it in the Force? Hey, we've lost uh, a member of the dark side. Come no, on. because not everyone, most stormtroopers and most uh, Imperial uh, lieutenants and commanders and generals of that period did not have the Force. But so no, well, there, there would be no Ky- reason for them to feel it. Well, let's say Kylo Ren does have that feeling, right? He wouldn't know that Darth Vader had like he's like clear like I don't see him in the in the in like uh where's the Dar- Darth Maul and well, all the that's other my fucking point, emperor is that like, my 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 point is maybe Kylo Ren doesn't force. even have the force which is why his lightsaber looks so shitty maybe he's just some fucking dude you know who also made a really poor attempt at a lightsaber Davy Mack when he was twelve he bought a thin yellow wiffle ball bat spray painted it red got duct tape right. and called it his lightsaber. And that's a true story. Stop. No, about, that's an actual true story. What about General Grievous? Was, was he a member of the dark side? He had like four fucking lightsabers. How does that work? Because he trained under Count Dooku. 
Okay. And he killed Jedi due to his training, so he collected lightsabers. He would collect their lightsabers after he killed them. So, but just my question is, do you have to be like a, like let's say that a Jedi, uh, whether it's dark side, light side, whatever. Sith, Sith is the dark okay, side. Okay, so you have to be Jedi. Sith, Sith or Jedi. Do you have to be one or the other to operate a, a lightsaber? Not necessarily, I don't think necessarily to operate. Remember, Han Solo operated Luke Skywalker's lightsaber in Empire Strikes Back when he cut that tauntaun open. But I do believe no. you have to probably be a Sith or Jedi to construct a lightsaber, which is why Kylo Ren's lightsaber looks so shitty. He, he, might, he just might be a mentally unstable dude. You know, I don't even know. I, I, I'm assuming he has a little bit of force because it looks like he does a force push at one point in the trailer where, you know, he puts her hand up and does that yeah. kind of thing. So I'm assuming, but who knows? I, I'm loving this Kylo Ren character. I, I can certifiably tell you, I think it's it's a brilliant, new, fresh character we've never seen before in the Star Wars movies. Now, I do want to get to this one question from Matt Carlin on Twitter, who asks, what's the best order to watch the Star Wars movies? Good question, Matthew. Start with uh, can I answer? Return of the Jedi. No, Sean, no, please. And then, and then That's go just to silly. What? Go ahead, Pepper. You answer that because Sean knows just being You watch so four through six and pretend the first three didn't happen. Yeah. Fuck you, pal. That's, Fuck that's... you and your hipster horse who won't see anything good. Revenge of the Sith is a great Star Wars movie. Here's what you do, Matt. Don't listen to these two cynical bastards. Watch episodes four and five. Then, after the big reveal at the end of Empire... You go back, watch episodes two and three. It'll be like a flashback sequence. What about one? Then you go and watch episode six. Hold on. You can still watch episode one if you want, but that's its own standalone Star Wars movie now. Okay, enjoy episode one for what it is. But if you want to watch the saga, four, five, two, three, six. Oh, come on. Bam. Thank you, Matt, for the question on, on uh, Twitter. I appreciate that. At Eastside Dave. So there you have it. Now, you guys looking forward to this? Is this going to... How about this? And I'm being serious about this. Because if the Batman can get nominated for Best Picture, will this get nominated for Best Picture? Yeah, they'll give, it, they'll give this the Best Picture. Wow. Why not? They will, give it to the fucking Lord of the Rings and shit. Same will it win Best Picture? Fantasy, sci -fi, no. Shit. Lord of the Rings won. The, uh, the uh, third Lord of the Rings won. Will this one win? No. Uh, what, else, what, well, what, what would be up against it? I don't know. I mean, no, we, we haven't had the full rollout yet of all the good, uh, you know, movies yet. Well, we, we won't get those till November, December. Tarantino's got a new one out. But again, this is Star Wars centric, Sean O'Barry. So let's keep that till our November episode of The Watchers. I'm saying. Um, how about this? Han Solo. Will Harrison Ford get nominated for supporting actor the way Alec Guinness was nominated in 1977? No. Pepper Stanberg? Oh, sorry. Your no, prediction? no fucking chance. Yeah, no chance. I agree. Why no chance? Not even to uh, th throw a bone for the old guy. He's done. He's done so much for Hollywood. They can't give him a nomination. No. Even just, just, just say, listen. He's never going to win for Han nope. Solo. We can give him a nomination. No, he should. He should got nominated for other things uh, back in the day. There's no way he's he's shit now. He sucks. Sorry, no, terrible actor now. All right, old man. Sorry. Well, I'll leave you with this: the star. Each one of the Star Wars trailers, the first one came out was about 57 seconds long. I thought it was utterly brilliant. I was excited. Second one came out. It was a minute 50 something or two minutes long. It was even better. I thought, my God, this movie is going to be incredible. This third one came out two and a half minutes long. And I'm saying this right now. Star Wars, The Force Awakens will win every Oscar and every Emmy and probably every Grammy MTV Video Award and every Billboard Award for years to come. I agree. Thank you very much. Oh, Can you hit the uh, the old music there, Sean O'Barry? Good night, no. everyone. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Sean, you've made this the most awkward night of all time. Can <laughs> okay. you please hit the music? Yes. Bye, everybody.